Thank you all very much. Kent, thank you very much. Uh, sure enjoy doing this. We have a great time talking fishing, seeing the uh, exchange in fish stories and, and, and seeing other anglers, that kind of thing. I'm going to talk about uh, some basic techniques. I grew up fishing Arizona lakes. I'm an Arizona native. I primarily fished Saguaro and Canyon Lake as a kid, deep clear water reservoirs, and uh, have a lot of experience fishing the Arizona lakes. And there's some, some baits that are staples that we use in Arizona since, since I first started fishing for bass when I was a kid. You know, and some spinner baits, crank baits, basic baits that everybody probably has in their tackle box already, but there's little simple adjustments you can do with those basic baits, different techniques, different ways to fish it, that will help you catch more fish. So I'm gonna start out with some basic baits and, and share with you some tips and techniques to catch more bass. First of all, I'm gonna start out with a spinner bait. This spinner bait is a, a Pro Swim Baits spinner bait. They started uh, making spinner baits. My good friend Oliver is over there at the Props Plus booth and is, uh, has a lot of good products. They make great, uh, great uh, hard baits and soft baits. This is a Pro Swim Baits swim, uh, spinner bait. Has a lot of vibration. This is three quarter ounce. Uh, the cool part about this spinner bait is the blade is actually easy, easily popped off. The top blade, you can pop that blade off and replace it with a different size blade if you want to go to a smaller, bigger blade to try different blade combinations. Because there's several times, depending on the size of the shad, uh, just changing the size of the, the blades to a smaller blades or even the color of the blade. This is a silver and gold. The top blade's gold, the bottom blade's silver. Most of the time, that's what I like. Half gold, half silver. One blade gold, one silver. Um, and it really works well. The willow leaf blades in Arizona and our clear water lakes are the best, in my opinion. You know, the round blades are the Colorado blades. The Colorado blades make a lot of thump, a lot of vibration, and they work well as, they, they work really well also, but I use those more at night. If I'm, you know, these spinner baits work at night also. I use those at night or in the muddy water. So if the water gets muddy, you can get, go to those, Colorado blades that make a lot more thump, a lot more vibration. So, <clears throat> a little bit about fishing the spinnerbait. Um, you know, if you've thrown a spinnerbait before, there's a lot you can do with it to help increase the amount of bites you're gonna get. A lot of people will just cast it out and reel it in. As you can see, the bait's just kind of suspended, you know, below the surface and above the bottom. It's just in that mid category right there. So, um, if you do that all day, just like that, you might never get bit. You might if the fishing's good, but you might not. So you really have to vary your retrieve, try different techniques, and the number one way, in my opinion, to catch fish on a spinnerbait is what they call slow rolling. So basically I'm barely gonna feel the vibration of the blades, just turn the reel handle fast enough to get those blades turning and make contact with the bottom, with the structure, all right? So I'm going to cast it out, and depending on how, how deep I'm fishing, I'm going to let it sink down, and I'm going to slow roll it. See, I can barely feel those blades turning. And I don't know if you can see how that makes contact with the rocks. I can feel those boulders. And as long as those blades are turning, the bait's going to be kept upright. So the hook is sticking up. So you're not going to get snagged very often. You can, you can fish this around trees and bushes, that kind of thing. But slow rolling it does a couple things for you. I'm, Number one, when this bait comes in contact with whatever's down there, uh, trees, bushes, stumps, rocks, boulders, gravel, sand, whatever's down there, um, flip-flops, sunglasses, whatever it comes in contact with, it makes noise. Guess what else makes noise? Crawdads clicking along the rocks, that makes noise. Um, bass are curious. They're gonna come over and see what's going on and see if there's something to eat. So. That's gonna attract fish, number one. Number two, as I make contact with that structure with this bait, you can see it's got a nice, slow, steady movement until I bump against that boulder. Once I bump against that boulder, it might hang up a little bit and dart and deflect off different things, all those things we talked about. And once you get that deflection, that erratic movement, more often than not, that's when you're gonna get that bite, right then, right when you make contact with that structure. So don't be afraid to really slow roll that spinnerbait and let it tick those rocks, let it tick those, those trees, that kind of thing. I'll tell you what, at Bartlett Lake with these heavier spinnerbaits, this is a three quarter ounce spinnerbait. 
I've gone as heavy as one and one and three eighths ounce spinnerbait. Strike King makes a, a, a real heavy spinnerbait where the weight actually goes down the shank of the hook, and it's a great bait. And I've caught fish in 30 foot of water reeling that spinnerbait in. Just make sure you feel those blades turning and make sure you're close to the bottom. Certain times of year when they're real active, you can burn it on the surface, just like that. Just reel it, make long casts. If you're in a big flat or a flat point, um, you can reel it, make long casts. If the fishing's good and the water's clear, the, a lot of times I've seen fish come from 20 feet away to hit a, a spinnerbait worked on the surface. So you can, you, that's what's neat about a spinnerbait. You can cast it in six inches of water, and I've caught fish on it in uh, as deep as over 30 foot of water. So it also catches big fish too. That's one thing I wanted to talk about. Back in 1991 at Canyon Lake, right by the marina, I caught the state record largemouth bass. It weighed almost 16 pounds, and I caught it on a spinnerbait. The spinnerbait I was throwing that day was a half ounce spinnerbait. It's a great size, three eight and a half, is, it, three, eight and a half ounce are very, very popular sizes. But uh, basically, same thing like I'm telling you, slow rolling, I was casting it right on the bank, and I caught a, the 15.86 pound largemouth bass, the state record held for six years. So you can catch some big fish on a spinnerbait for sure. So with that being said, when you throw in a spinnerbait, it's got a, a, a pretty good size hook, good size diameter hook, it's a meaty hook. So you wanna have at least a medium heavy action rod, something that you can, you can get those fish out of those trees, out of those rocks, something that you have enough backbone to set the hook on and get that hook down. Also, you wanna have at least 14 pound line. I don't like to go lighter than 14 pound line. I usually throw spinnerbaits on 17. So, you know, anywhere from 14 to 17 pound line. I'm using fluorocarbon. We, you probably always hear us talk about fluorocarbon. It's, it's invisible, it has less stretch. You feel every little rock, every pebble, every vibration, and, and that's a good thing. Because sometimes it's when, it, when they're not really biting good, I'll just, I'll just be reeling this along, just feeling the blades turning, feeling the blades thumping, and all of a sudden the blades stop turning. And I'm like, okay, hmm. A lot of times those fish will just swim the same speed that spinnerbait's going and have it in their mouth. And when I stop feeling those blades turning, that's when you want to set the hook and reel them in. So spinnerbait's an awesome bait. This is the time of year to use it. Um, uh, it works year round, but springtime, as these fish are moving up right now, uh, I fished the Warren Canyon the last few days and fishing's getting good. And a spinnerbait's a great bait to try, especially at Roosevelt, Alamo, anywhere there's places where there's, there's trees. I stick to the basic colors, white skirt, white chartreuse, or chartreuse, depending on the water clarity. If the water's crystal clear like this, like Lake Mead or even Pleasant's crystal clear, I like to use like a pearl uh, color skirt. I don't use a lot of trailers. I know guys that do, that's all personal preference, but keep the, I keep the colors pretty simple and make contact with the bottom. Spinnerbait's an awesome bait. Just gonna touch on a couple uh, of tips with the crankbait. I talked about the importance of making contact with the structure, making contact with the bottom. This is a, this is a Rapala DT10 and I got this color so everybody could see it in the tank pretty good. This is a fire tiger type color. It stands out. It's, it, this would be the kind of color I'd want to throw in the muddy or stained water. If the water's clear like this, I want to use a shad pattern, a crawdad pattern, a more natural pattern. So just like I was talking about with the spinnerbait, I want to make contact with whatever's down there. So with that being said, you know, talking about the basic baits we're using, you know, crankbait is a simple bait to use. You cast it out, you reel it in. You cast it out, you reel in. But if you start concentrating on making contact with the bottom, letting that bait deflect, and you can see, I can feel it as it's bumping through the, the rocks and everything, it deflects, has that erratic movement, like I talked about the spinnerbait. Nine times out of 10, that's when you're gonna, you're gonna get your bites. So this Rapala bait dives to 10 foot of water. So a lot of people think, well, I need to be in at least 10 foot of water to throw it or I'm gonna get snagged. That's wrong. You wanna be, you can throw these baits. I, and I know guys that throw the big DD-22s that dive down 22 foot of water. They'll throw them in a foot of water and they'll start grinding. A lot of the guys call it digging trenches, they call it. So what they'll do is they make a long cast, hold that rod tip close to the surface of the water and get that bait down as deep as they can get it. Call it digging trenches, making that noise, making the deflection. So 
that's what's going to trigger those strikes. Um, all kinds of crankbaits out there on the market, they, they all work. I really like the Rapala baits just because they, they run perfect right out of the package. You don't have to tune them. They have good quality hooks, and I've caught a lot of fish on them. It has a really good wobble, um, not too much, um, not too little. The, the DT10s, the DT series have the rattles in it also that even attract the fish. I've caught crankbait fish at night and spinnerbait fish at night. Um, as you know, the bass has that lateral line that runs down the side of their bodies. They can sense the vibration, the signature of a little inch and a half long shad. They can find that in that muddy water in the, or in the dark. You know, the bass still feed. So, you know, if a lake gets muddy all of a sudden, the bass still eat and they use their lateral line. They want to feel that vibration. So that's where, with that muddy or stained water, you, make, you, you use a, a crankbait or something with a lot of vibration and some noise where they, it'll help them find it. So with that being said, when I'm fishing Lake Mead that has real clear water or, uh, you know, Lake Pleasant, sometimes the signature, the signature, the, the vibration that you want is a little, you want a lot less because they can use their sight so much that if, that, that if the vibration overpowers what they're seeing, a lot of times it doesn't work. So uh, that's a good tip right there is just to, to, you know, really look at the water color and when you select your baits. But just like that spinner bait, make contact, slow, steady retrieve. Every once in a while to bump into a rock, I'll stop it, let it float up, start reeling, ag reeling again. Just sometimes that erratic movement is when you get those bites. So stick to the natural colors, shad patterns, crawdad, crawdad patterns, um, chartreuse, I like a lot too when the water's stained.